clock is a little past 11, so we will start this defense of the thesis of uh, Katai. It is. And uh, I would like to welcome, uh, first of all, the examiners. Um, uh, ladies first, Professor Iris uh, Wies, uh, uh, Professor in Industrial Engineering uh, at the Faculty of Economics and Business in, at the University of uh, Groningen. Um, and then Professor Dr. Frank Meisel, uh, Professor in Supply Chain Management uh, at the Christian Albrechts uh, University in Kiel. And then uh, last, uh, uh, Lars Drastis, um, University here at DTU Management. Uh, so this was the examiners. And then also welcome to the uh, supervisors, um, main supervisor, Alan uh, Larsen uh, at DTU Management. Uh, also, uh, welcome to Professor Stefan Röpke, who is a, a supervisor also for this project, also at DTU Management, and then uh, lecture Dario uh, Pacino, also from DTU Management. Okay. And of course, I would like to welcome the rest of you, and not least uh, the Turkish uh, guys back home. <laughs> <laughs> they are, there's a live streaming going on, and I know there's some Turkish uh, sitting. Okay. Okay. So, um, Katai is going to uh, defend his thesis, and the title of the thesis you can see here is Exact and Heuristic Methods for Integrated Container Terminal Problems. Um, and uh, this uh, uh, thesis is about, and it's a very brief uh, description, about uh, optimization of integrated container terminal problems for operation from the seaside as well as from the outside. Uh, more specifically, uh, about scheduling of berths and cranes and the operational planning uh, problems related to this. Okay, and uh, what is going to happen now is that you will give a presentation of approximately 45 minutes, and then we will have a break after that of approximately five minutes, and then we will start having questions from the examiners. Okay? So um, please go ahead. Thank you, first of all. Uh, welcome uh, to the presentation today of my PhD defense. Um, yeah, as the title said, um, I'm today going to talk about integrated container terminal problems. Of course, I'll go in deep into details of which problem that I'll discuss uh, stage by stage. Uh, the solution methods uh, to these problems are solved uh, by using operations research methods. Uh, some of them are exact methods, trying to solve the optimality. Some of them are heuristic methods. So it's a combination of these two. The uh, PhD project started in 2013, February. Uh, then after three years, uh, three years and three months actually, I submitted the PhD thesis uh, for defense. So, uh, my name is Chatai Iris. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, any pronunciation is welcomed. Uh, yeah, but still fine. Yeah, let's go into details then. First of all, um, I would like to give some very brief agenda of the talk. Uh, I'll start with the overview of the general container terminal framework, what's included in a container terminal, what are the operations, processes, etc. Then I'll set very briefly some motivation of the thesis. Why did we do this project? What's the reason behind it? Then after setting the motivation, uh, I'll go into details of each chapter. So chapters are correspondent to the thesis. Uh, so it will be starting from chapter two to chapter six as representing each chapter uh, uh, a research and a research outcome. So I'll go step by step as well while presenting the results. So there is also some additional material uh, which is not listed. Uh, detailed in the thesis, but I'll also list them for your notice uh, that 
what has been done throughout the whole three years PhD project. Yes. So, if I start very briefly, here it's an overview of a container terminal. Um, you would see that um, there will be ships coming in into the terminal where they, they berth uh, to be loaded and unloaded, the containers. It's where the ship operations area is. It's also sometimes called seaside operations area. And then there is a yard where the, the containers are, are stacked uh, for inbound and outbound containers. Also, they could be for transshipment as well, uh, getting out, getting in and getting out. And there will be some truck and train operations area where the, the trucks arrive in the container terminal, uh, containers are getting in and uh, handled. So, of course, as, as we all know, that there is a continuous flow between those components of the terminal. Uh, this, compo uh, this flow is both um, product flow, material flow, container flow, and information flow. After setting this scene, actually, as you can see that there are some uh, different parties and they are interacting. And this means there are some resources that they share in this terminal. What are those resources? Very briefly, there are the berths where the containers, uh, where the vessels moor. And then there are the key cranes that loads and unloads the containers for, for each vessel. And there is the yard and stacks where we temporarily stack the, the containers for, uh, for the operations. Actually, there are more, but I won't go into details of the others because the, the content of the thesis is more on the seaside and yard side of things. So just I'll, I'll keep it uh, as it is right now. Yeah. Then um, I, I, sh I would like to set a general uh, discussion, why do we need the use of operations research methods uh, in order to solve the problems of the container terminals? Actually, one of the things is, as we know, that there is an increasing trade volume uh, in the whole world, that container terminals handle more and more containers every year, that generates an, an additional uh, operation for the terminals that they have to handle. That's one of the motivation that they have to improve their efficiency with respect to increasing numbers. Another thing is the numbers are increasing, the trade is increasing, so that the liner shipping companies, they enlarge, enlarge the vessels. So there are larger vessels coming in into the terminals. So this means there will be more peak loads in the terminals and the operation sizes are increasing. That means we require more resources for those vessels to handle. The next two is actually somehow binded. The vessels, they do slow steaming. They sail slower in the, in the open sea. Uh, in order to compensate this actually capacity loss, there is more increasing visit frequencies for the, for the liner shipping companies uh, to the ports. So these two actually generate another pressure on the terminals in order to, to meet the expectations of the transit times of the liner shipping companies to make them, uh, to make them working in that way. And there is also the system of hub and spoke. So you have larger terminals where uh, big vessels uh, visit and there are some feeders that feeds those spots. So the combination of those two is actually imposing more and more larger vessel, uh, larger uh, terminals and they have to use more of operations research methods in order to cope with this increasing complexity and uh, increasing number of operations. And another thing is actually there is a severe competition between the container terminals. The more container you handle per hour, you would attract for sure more cargo for, for, from the competitors. So it's another way of attracting more, more cargo, let's say. Then I move into the motivation of the thesis. As I, as I said before, uh, the, the thesis focuses on the integration of problems. But why do we integrate the problems? That's, that's one question. There are distinct problems. 
we can solve them separately, right? Or in a hierarchical way. We can start, as I showed you, there is a flow uh, between C site and land site. You can solve the C site problem and then you can solve the land site problem. Then it could be some hierarchical flow. But what is the deficiencies with this? If you do it in the hierarchical way, there might be some infeasible and conflicting solutions between the parties or some poor solutions. Another thing is that whenever you integrate the problems, each problem uses some resources of the terminal, birds, key cranes, yard equipment, etc. If you integrate the problems, that you ensure that you, you, uh, the use of common resources is increased. So you use the resources more efficiently in that way, the, the, the consideration of integration. And what is more, each uh, problem has a, a cost or as an objective function, which focus on a cost. But there are some different trade-offs. So if you integrate the problems in, an, in a meaningful manner, you would obtain better uh, cost trade-offs as well to understand the real cost drivers of each problem. Actually, that was the main step, how we started the project, uh, where we should start from, the, the integration prospect of the terminals, of the terminal problems. Actually, of course, there is more uh, descriptions, details in the thesis that you, you can read. Uh, yeah. Now, here, this slide, actually, I would like to give the, the main uh, components of the thesis. Here, as I have described, I have showed you the picture. Here you can see more in a, in a template style. We have the key area where the vessel berths, and then we have the key crane operating on it. It's a functional area. Then we have the transport area where the, the flow goes on, uh, and we have the yard. So the thesis focus on mainly the key and the transport area operations and in integration of problems in these areas. The first two research chapters actually focus on the birth allocation problem and key crane assignment problem. As I described, there are birds. We define the birth allocation and we make the key crane allocation. There are two chapters focusing on this problem. First chapter focus on exact methods. Uh, the second chapter is both exact and heuristic methods. This is the, uh, these two chapters focusing on deterministic problems. Then we go on uh, one edition, birth allocation we have, key crane assignment. Then we add the key crane scheduling. This is a stochastic problem. Then we also look at, uh, we try to solve it uh, by use of an exact method, this problem as well. Then we, we move and we jump, let's say, to the transport area, uh, and we focus on the storage planning of the assignment of containers, load sequencing, and the vehicle dispatching and scheduling problem in, in, this, uh, in this area. And there are two chapters looking at it. One chapter is a literature review, and the other chapter uh, solves the problem by use of exact and heuristic methods. That's the content of the thesis. But there are also some uh, other studies that I'll list in the end. So, I would like to start uh, for the details of each problem. Then, as I said, I'll go step by step for the problem uh, definitions as well. The chapter two is the integrated birth allocation and key crane assignment problems, set partitioning models, and uh, computational results. First, um, I would like to describe the problem, what's in the problem. Um, we have the birth allocation problem component. What's the birth allocation? It's the finding of the birthing position uh, for each vessel and determining birthing start time and birthing end time for each vessel. And we have the key crane assignment problem. This is defining how many key cranes to serve for each vessel through the birthing. In this version of the problem, as you can see, we do not determine specific key crane. We just determine the number of key cranes to assign for each vessel. And the question comes out, these two problems, how do they interact? So I would easily say that the number of key cranes you assign for each vessel determines how long it will take the processing time, the handling time. So the handling time is, is a very important parameter for the birth allocation problem itself. 
the way around, the place where you define to birth is very important as well because it somehow affects the, the horizontal transportation times of all transport equipment. So this would also somehow determine which key crane numbers are required. There will be more key crane requirement than if you also birth in a place that you don't want to birth that much. So there is two-way directional interaction between the two problems. Here is an actual example from a Meisel and Beerweert. Uh, the, the rectangles are the vessels and the smaller ones are the key cranes. So we determine the number, the position of birthing and the time of birthing. So these are the components of the problem. Very briefly, um, in a period one, you have a key configuration of like this. Vessels are there and key cranes. Then what happens? Uh, you determine you have three key cranes, then you move and you have two key cranes for the next period and two for the other uh, vessel. This is the, another period. Then some vessels leave the system. Then uh, you decide where the next vessel will be birthed. So it's another decision variable to decide where to birth the vessel. So then you birth it and you determine the number of key cranes to operate on the vessel. Yeah, so this is the somehow frame of the problem. What do we do? We determine the birthing position, birthing starting time, ending time, uh, the number of key cranes to operate for each vessel uh, throughout the birthing time. And of course, there are some properties, deepen properties of each problem. I won't go into details of them, but for some aspects, for example, for the key partitioning, uh, the given problem uh, is discretized into number of positions. It's not completely continuous. You can not birth wherever you want, but it's partitioned in a more discretized way. It's more like ten, every 10 meter discretized, let's say. If we go into the details of the problem, we would see that. So it gives a finer control over the placement of each vessel rather than having fixed berths where you fit the vessel in. This is more, more of better use for the key area. And this is how the problem is structured. So after setting the scene of the problem, what are the components of, of the problem? I now go into our uh, contribution. I'll very, I picked up some aspects. I won't go into details of each uh, contribution, but you might read them through the thesis. We propose generalized separationing problem formulations for this problem to solve it. Here, the, as you can see, the vessels are re rectangles that are uh, assigned. Here are the birthing positions and birthing time. You can see that they, don't, they shouldn't overlap and they are at most using one combination of birthing position and birthing time. So a complete solution is something like this and it, it fulfills the constraints, the requirements of the problem in, in all aspects. So how do we generate? Uh, here I would say e each variable is represented by a column, a column representation. It starts with generating of all columns a priori. Then uh, we, we evaluate them in the separationing way. So the, the way of generation is starting from the earliest starting time and it's generating each vessel column one by one. But uh, for, for this problem, I didn't want to, uh, for our problem definition, uh, the, the, the horizon is unbounded, but for the simplicity, I didn't want to mention them all. Here it's going on this way. You are generating all columns one by one, feasible ones. Then for other vessels as well, you are going on in this way. And each position is here in that way. Now, let me start with the formulations. Uh, first one is time invariant, which means the number of key cranes doesn't change through the time. So each vessel has, uh, here is a column, uh, each vessel has its space and time uh, allocation and its moves shifts on in this way, as you can see. And it's also included with the number of key cranes assigned. So for this, as you can see, the number of key cranes assigned is fixed. 
So we generate those, all of them, in a priori. What's the, what's the decision variable then? It is whether we will use one uh, column, yes or no. It's a binary decision variable. The objective function is the minimization of the overall cost, where we generate the cost as well. Uh, we know that from the problem definition. The constraints, each vessel must be assigned once, and each position must be used at most once. And there is a limit on the number of key cranes to use, right? It, since we know uh, how many to assign for each space, it's bounded this way. This is for time invariant case. If you go to the time variant case, we don't have the specific key crane allocation for each position. Instead, we, we know the minimum and maximum processing time, we calculate it, and we generate the columns in that way. The cost is, this portion of the cost is lateness and earliness costs, and this portion of the cost is handling the key crane costs. It's the sum of those two. Again, we have the vessel assignment constraints, positions that you can use at most once, the limits on the key crane numbers, and there should be a link between the key crane uh, utilization and the, the deviation from the desired position, and you should have the link between time plan and the assignment components. This is the, the time, in, time variant backup formulation. Then we come up with some column reduction algorithms. I'll, there are maybe five, six reduction techniques, but I'll just uh, describe two of them here. I won't go into details. So what do we do for time invariant, for example? We go for all columns, and we pick it up the least cost column for, for each vessel. If you sum for all vessels the least cost columns, you would obtain a lower bound on the objective function. That's one bound. For the time variant case, uh, you would, we would have an other approximation for the cost, uh, cost of lateness, earliness uh, portion, and an approximation on the cost of key crane operations. Then how do we uh, get rid of, how do we pre-process a column? Uh, the lower bound is added by the cost of that column, and if you deduct the least cost uh, uh, column of that given ship, if this sum is greater than the upper bound of the overall problem, then you don't need that column for sure. You get rid of it. Then we also have some probers. The, the, the probing method just fixes some uh, variables and analyzes the further effects. So you fix this uh, ship to, to this position. There will be some infeasible uh, vessels, some assignments in response to this. Then what do we do? We get rid of those uh, infeasible assignments, then you would be remained with the feasible assignments. If you pick up for each vessel the minimum feasible cost column, and if you sum them up with this assignment, if you are going beyond the upper bound, again, you don't need that column. So you can get rid of that column as well. So if we do this for all columns in the list, then we might get rid of some, we might do some further reductions as well from the uh, from the pool of columns. Then, for the remaining columns, we solve the separation problem for all. There are further detailed results. I won't go into details of them, but after we implement the case, uh, let's say for large-scale instances, we reduce the gap from 30% to 14% uh, gaps, the optimality times uh, one-third of time, and we solve for sure more instances to, to optimality. By, by use of these methods. And also, the results show that with use of column reduction techniques, we can get rid of at most uh, to 80% of the columns that are in use. So this paper is actually published in Transportation Research Part E, and there are also other contributions of the paper. Uh, there is a literature review on backup. We analyze the performance of these different discretization methods. We compare time invariance, and we also solve the problem for classical birth allocation. So we, in the next chapter, we improve this solution, and we come up with some heuristic methods for the same problem. Here is some representation of the problem, uh, where we have uh, some, some variables, which are enlisted, starting, ending, uh, key crane, uh, vessel orderings, which comes after what. Then 
Again, we have 10 valid inequality set, but here I'll briefly describe three of them, four of them. So here we determine the minimum processing time. If two vessels are following each other, the starting time plus the minimum processing time should be less than the second one's starting time. That's one side. If they are not following each other, uh, the starting time of J should be bounded by the earliest starting time of J. This is uh, one of the valid inequalities, for example. The other valid inequality is setting the bounds on the starting time and ending time for each, uh, for each vessel. So this is the key crane requirement div divided by maximum use of key cranes and minimum use of key cranes. That's one thing. Another thing is we use the set partitioning formulations. So we, by taking the corner points of each, uh, each variable, let's say, we can set the bounds on the starting time, ending time, and berthing position. We, we can limit the decision variables in the original formulation. What's more, we can, uh, we can set uh, a, a new decision variable that handles the starting time of each vessel, which do, we do not have in the original formulation. Then we link this starting time with the key crane assignment for each position, and uh, we set the, the, uh, the following uh, constraints to, to handle whenever a key crane is, uh, whenever it's a starting point, there should be a key crane assignment or the way around. The, the constraints handle those things. And we also have a, a symmetrical formulation for ending periods for, for all of this. Yep, then this is not perfectly looking, but I'll just uh, describe very details, not very details, let's say. Oops. Uh, for, for large scale instances, uh, from 26% of optimality gap uh, for, for the previous version, we deduce it to, to 8% around. So from 4% to 0.4%. And we solve uh, more instances uh, to optimality with the use of those methods. We also compare it with our se previous separtitioning formulation. Separtitioning uh, obtains more uh, solutions to optimality, but the gaps are, are uh, fairly better for the improved version of the model uh, compared to the uh, separtitioning formulation of ours. Then I move on to the heuristic part of this chapter. We implement an adaptive large neighborhood search method for this problem. It's based on uh, construction and uh, destroy and repair flow, where we start with an uh, initial solution, then we get rid of some assignments from the set of vessels, then we reinsert them into the solution space and evaluate the, the outcomes. Uh, and we check if it is improving, uh, we, we apply the, that solution. If it is not, then we come up with the simulated annealing criteria of the problem that we handle. So uh, it starts with a construction heuristic. It's based on destroy repair method. We used an adaptive weight adjustment and adaptive selection of methods for the operators. And the overall accepting criteria is the simulated annealing for this problem. How is the construction heuristic looking like? It's, uh, again, we generate uh, assignments a priori. Uh, they are in the pool of evaluation. It's the column representation for separtitioning. Then we in insert them in a grid way into the solution space. Then the, the construction of the uh, first solution is made. Then there are uh, four destroy methods and two repair methods. Uh, actually, sorry, this should be four. Uh, we have uh, show removal, uh, cost and time relatedness removal, cost and birth relatedness removal, and random removal with two solutions out of the space. And then we do the repair, we insert them back into solution. There is a greedy insertion and smarter greedy insertion. Uh, I won't go into details of each operator, uh, but I just want to show how, 
how do they react to things. So this is how a solution looks like, for example, before destroying it. Then whenever you destroy, you take some vessels out of the solution. Then this is, uh, this is a partial solution, we say. Then we take the same vessels and insert them back into the solution. How do we do it? I just uh, tell very brief details of uh, first insertion mechanism. What do we do? Uh, we have the list of columns for each vessel that will be inserted into the solution. We go uh, over the list one by one. Uh, we check uh, an edge, random edge. If this edge meets uh, the, if the random number is greater than the edge, then we don't consider this assignment. We go to the next assignment. This is to give randomness to the insertion as well. Uh, then, if it is not the case, then we insert, we try to insert this assignment into the solution. We check whether if it overlaps with the existing uh, columns which, is, which are in the solution. If it is not overlapping and there is enough key crane capacity, that means we can insert this vessel into the solution. Then we add this assignment into the partial solution. Then we make the detailed key crane assignment. This is not included the detailed key crane assignment. It's just with numbers here stored in the columns. So we just make the detailed one and we remove the vessel from the insertion list. Then if it is not the case, if it is not feasible to do this, we go to the next assignment. And we continue this until we insert all vessels uh, from the insertion list. The smarter uh, method do not take the uh, information stored in the column, but we do it in a more uh, smarter way, let's say. We go check the available capacity for each uh, period, then make the assignment accordingly. And this is a, a better key crane assignment with available key crane capacities. And after we repair the solution, it's how does it look like? It's just a representation. It's just no details in it. So to give some results for this, uh, we compare the method with the uh, table search and securely wheel, uh, I forgot, yeah, uh, of this heuristic method, um, optimization, right? Securely wheel optimization method. Um, yes, so for, for small, medium, and large scale instances, it's uh, unreadable at all. I, I know, but I'll just very roughly explain you what's going on. Uh, the table search obtains a, a gap of 12% and SVO is 10%. The average ALNS obtains 5% of gap and the best is uh, with 3% of optimality gap. The computational times uh, for, for SVO and TS is around 200 uh, 50 uh, seconds, while uh, our LNS is 130 seconds. For medium scale instances, it's 3.8% to the average is 2.8%. And we solve uh, some of the small scale instances uh, to optimality with the use of the, the LNS as well. So we somehow show that, uh, of course, the computers are different, uh, but uh, ALNS is, is comparable with the methods presented in the literature for, uh, for, for this problem. Yes. So this, whenever uh, I submitted the thesis, this paper was submitted for the computers and operations research. And uh, there are some other contributions as well in that paper. We come up with new constructive heuristics. There are new valid inequalities for use of any relevant problem. And we also show new properties for, for the problem itself. Now, uh, stochastic programming part. We, there are some uncertainties in the, in the operations going on. So what are those? Uh, the arrival time is mostly uncertain and the processing time is mostly uncertain. So these two are, are tackled in a stochastic way in this chapter. Uh, th this, this project is made in Singapore so we talk with Port of Singapore for, for randomness, what's going on. And here is the application 
for the Burt and Keycrane scheduling problem. In the first stage, uh, we determine the Keycrane assignment. Here, in addition, is we also determine the specific uh, Keycrane assignment. We also order all vessels in the pool, so we make the uh, uh, the ordering and assignments of all vessels. This is the first stage variable. After we fix them, in the second stage, we determine the berthing starting time, berthing ending time, and uh, key crane positions for all key cranes in accordance with it. And in the second stage, uh, the arrival time and processing time realizes. So these are the stochastic parameters in the first stage. Then they realize in the second stage. And this is also a, results in a convex objective function. Here is the master problem. Uh, we don't have a cost component uh, coming from the master problem. Um, the, uh, the first constraint assigns the key cranes uh, with respect to numbers. Then we have the vessel schedules here. And this constraint uh, ensures that we assign one key crane policy for each vessel. This is the master problem. And this component is the reflection expected value of the second stage problem. This is how a solution looks like. Uh, we, we have the vessels, their key crane assignments, and their orderings. We all determine those parameters in the master problem stage. Then what do we do? We solve uh, this problem for each scenario sub problem. Scenario sub problems are uh, key crane scheduling problems where the objective is cost of key crane operations plus some costness of related lateness. Then we make the assignment of key crane scheduling. I won't go into details of those constraints. Uh, they ensure the uh, starting times, ending times, the, the key crane positions, and key crane non-overtaking constraints. They should be uh, in a line with the increasing uh, positions, right? This is, this is solved for each scenario sub-problem. These are slave problems. And this is how a solution looks like for this. And we have some valid inequalities, we have six sets of valid inequalities for this problem, but I'll just go for two. Uh, the key crane positions must be consecutive. Uh, the at most Q number of key cranes could be assigned for each position. So this is to ensure those. Then how do we solve this problem? We have an uh, enhanced integer L-shaped method to solve the problem. Uh, we've, it's two-staged. We first relax the integer variables, solve the relaxed master problem. We add the optimality and feasibility cuts for each stage, then update the lower bound. Then we check uh, whether we solve all second stage problems are feasible with respect to this. If not, then add feasibility cuts under they are all feasible. Solve all second stage problems to optimality and update the upper bound. Then add the optimality cut if it is not optimized, right? Then uh, these optimality cuts are for relaxed master problem and integer master problem cases. And if we are just solving the integer case, then we have integer optimality cuts, no good cuts, etc. Other cuts which are already in the literature. I won't go into details of the cuts. You can read them from the paper. And we check the termination criterion. Uh, whether to stop or we finish up solving the relaxed master problem, then we impose the integrality back and go on. What are the enhancements? It's a two-phased approach. We solve all uh, second stage problems uh, in parallel. We do parallelization. We use also combinatorial benders cuts for feasibility cuts, and we have some inequalities in order to uh, improve the performance. Then some computational results. Um, compared to the deterministic equivalent uh, formulation for 10 vessels, we somehow uh, do better with use of integer L-shaped methods. Uh, for, for very large scale instances, for 26 vessels, for example, the relaxed version even takes very much of the time of five hours of running. So we come up with uh, larger gaps with respect to the deterministic equivalent formulation of the stochastic program. So this is uh, hopefully going to be submitted uh, soon. It's Jiang Gang, Prof. Lee, and Stefan. Uh, and we do some uncertainty review 
and we analyze the value of information in this paper, we also have a risk averse deterministic equivalent formulation. Then I go to the survey on the ship loading. Uh, here we focus on the stowage planning problems and stowage planning is mainly the uh, objective of the liner shipping company. But here we come up with a common aspect of liner shipping and uh, port operator. The uh, so we make the terminal oriented stowage planning where we have the class based plan and uh, we make the, key, uh, the container assignment for each position with respect to those plans. It's a new problem. Uh, yep. First, that's why we wanted to start with a literature review for this. Yes. So it's how a class-based storage plan looks like. We have just the container types for each position, which are defined with respect to destination port, weight clusters, type of container, and properties of the container. This is given, class-based storage plan is given to the terminal by the liner shipping company. Then uh, our approach to come up with this integrated problem is we are doing the operational storage planning, which assigns specific containers for each slot with respect to the class-based plan. Then it also matters the load sequencing. How do you optimize in which order should you load? And the combined key equipment assignment and scheduling to do those things. This is the integrated problem that we came up with. So this is the arrival configuration. The vessel moves. Then it goes into the departure configuration. So these are the types of uh, containers here. This is how it should look like. But we don't know which specific container will go in. We just know the type. So we determine the, the specific container with respect to what? With respect to traveling distance, ready times, the number of uh, containers to reshuffle. They all affect this, this specific assignment. And we can all improve with those aspects. Yeah. And this is a solution, for example. It is assigned in this way. Then how an operative storage plan looks like. This is a result, for example. A1 goes to here, A7 goes to here, etc. This is how a solution looks like for operative storage planning. Then there is this Monaco paper doing it. Uh, the, uh, you can, of course, read the paper. The objectives are total travel time and yard shift times. They don't allow uh, the, the, the assignments of containers uh, on top of each other in an increasing uh, weight order, etc. Then the, the load sequencing problem comes. The key crane split is known. Then we optimize the loading. If you do the stack wise and C to length, this is how it looks like. It's the make span. If you optimize it, for example, you can have a uh, smaller make span, which is better for the problem. So combining operative storage plan with this, we'd also increase. The, the performance. There is this Lee paper doing it, standing alone, not in a combined way. Uh, the order is given in that way. And the objective is to minimize uh, the given criterion. And then the equipment assignment and scheduling literature. There are many different papers doing it. I won't go into details of them for AGVs, other equipments, etc. And the integration, there are not many papers doing the integration. Uh, and most of them are doing in a distinct way. So not deep and integration is there. I won't detail this, but we have this in this paper that we cluster papers with respect to problem structure, objective function, and solution approaches. This paper is published in lecture notes in computer science, computational logistics. Now I go into the details of the formulations for this problem after I set the literature review where we consider the transfer vehicle assignment and scheduling at the same time with respect to storage plan, operative storage planning and load sequencing. So I set the problem as it is here, it's there. As I described beforehand, we have the operative storage plan. It's the assignment of each container to each slot with respect to class-based storage plan. In this paper, the load sequencing is known. We assume that it's known. And it's namely from sea to land, and stack-wise sequencing is assumed. And we also assign the transfer vehicles. It's, of course, the limited number is available, and the, the, the pooling is not allowed. So for each key crane, 
there's a fixed number of startup carriers that's working. Time, in, time variant uh, transfer vehicle assignment is there. And also, it's about the assignment of picking up order for each uh, transfer vehicle, and it's about the scheduling of them. There are further assumptions. Uh, we don't allow dual cycling. Uh, we, don't, uh, we assume that a pre-marshalling is made, so we don't assume there's more retrieval. Stability is ensured with the class-based plan. Uh, Non-preemption and um, travel times are there in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the times. They're all there, and there are no buffer area uh, in front of the key crane. These are the further assumptions of the problem. So what are the decision variables? Um, we determine the, pick, uh, the dropping time for each position by, uh, of each key crane by given transfer vehicle, the starting and ending time of working for each of them, the make span of all operations, and lateness. And this is the uh, decision variable that handles the operative storage plan. This is the, how the mathematical model looks like. Um, the objective function is to minimize the transfer vehicle operation costs and lateness costs. We assign the containers to positions. We also fulfill all positions. We make the scheduling of the transfer vehicles and we link them and we obtain uh, the lateness parameters and the cost of uh, transfer vehicle assignment. And uh, we try to minimize those things. There are also enhancements of this formulation in the, in the paper. Uh, there are more than six families, but I'll just briefly describe two of them here, uh, that the make is the, uh, should be greater than for each, uh, the, the maximum of all key cranes, the overall loading time versus this is the, the lower bound on the overall loading and uh, waiting time. So the make span should be greater than the maximum of those two. That, that's embedded in the formulation. Another constraint is for each uh, transfer vehicle, uh, we, we assume uh, we set the working time of it should be greater than the overall uh, transport time of all containers that will be loaded by that, uh, by that sterile carrier. So, sterile carrier or transfer vehicle, which whatever it's used. Then we have a lower bounding model for this version. Um, this is again, it's reduced model. Uh, it assumes that for each container an assignment is made and each position is fulfilled. The, we set the lower bounds on the make span. It's either the total loading time or the loading time it takes to transfer all key cranes. Uh, and the, the lower bounds of uh, waiting and transport. Here we get, get rid of the starting time and ending time variables. So this model sets a lower bound for the overall problem that we use. And yeah, this is the objective how it's looked like. So these are some results for this problem. Um, the original formulation with around 80% of gaps. If we impose the, the enhancements, then we solve uh, many of them to optimality for small scale instances. Uh, and these are not tight uh, finishing time values. And if we look at the performance of the lower bound, uh, it's doing pretty well, uh, obtaining the same lower bounds that are obtained uh, with the enhanced models. We also have some upper bounds in this paper, but I, won't, I don't go into details of the upper bounds. And uh, they are doing also, uh, let's say, uh, okay performances. Yeah, like 20% of gaps. If we look at the larger scale instances uh, and tighter uh, expected finishing times, then we come up with some gaps around 10%, 15%, and 20% of optimality for the improved version, while we cannot we have around 80% of gaps for the original version of the problem. Uh, this, this chapter is, uh, is a technical report stage yet. Uh, it's uh, me, Dario, and Stefan working on it right now. Uh, we might expand. Uh, and there are more additional contributions also in this paper. 
we compare the hierarchical versus integrated solution, where we solve them in a hierarchical way versus integrated way. We also solve the minimum fleet size problem, which is also a variant of this problem, and we come up with new lower bounds on the, on the problem. These are the all that I addressed in the papers. Uh, there are also additional projects that I am involved in. So we have, in this, in this uh, problem, we, have, we solve a collaborative problem where we solve multiple, uh, multiple port birth allocation and we do the speed optimization between each leg. And we have another paper with Jiang Gang. Uh, it's a column generation paper to solve the robust uh, birth allocation and key crane assignment problem. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks.